Hi guys, thanks for joining us today as part of the Keep Britain Going campaign. Um, we're going to do a series of sort of around the mic discussions with certain people from a variety of different industries. Um, I'm James, I work in the sales team at Expend and I'm here joined today by Scott Parsons, managing and founding partner of Forsyth Barnes. Scott? Hi guys, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Scott Parsons, Managing Partner of Foresight Farms. We're a Senior Appointments and Executive Appointments Specialist for Group of People. Fantastic. And today we're going to be discussing a few topics around very much sort of your, <coughs> uh, your sort of remit, um, kind of discussions around sort of the remote working side of things, obviously being the nature of the size of your business as well, sort of being nimble and, and in a small business that, that we can kind of reflect on as well. Um, the ideas around sort of what's happening in sort of the recruitment space generally, um, as well as what you think sort of that impact could be in the future. And then just a general sort of bit of a roundup on, on what we think the impact of, look, I'm going to address the elephant in the room of COVID-19, coronavirus, these unprecedented times. I'm going to do all the bingos at the start. <clears throat> so let us know when you got a line. Um, but we'll kind of kick things off with, I guess, around sort of the remote working and how things are currently um so how are you kind of managing things with, with 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 the consultants that you've got so we switched to remote working before the lockdown started um bit of a stress test on our systems make sure that everything can work there um, but it's working really well for us so far um, a lot of videos throughout the day a lot of touch points um with different people make sure that everybody can be engaged um and a lot of other i suppose extracurricular engagements as well with virtual pub quizzes and uh, FIFA tournaments with clients and with the guys, um, there's loads going on. Yeah, nice. I think, yeah, we, we've kind of taken a, a similar tact of we went for the, the, the day before the lockdown was our test of can we do it? Um, I think the nature of being in a tech business, we were quite confident we could, um, almost arrogant that we could immediately found a couple of little speed bumps but it was good to have that initial that and I think yeah I think that the announcement of the lockdown kind of came and we just didn't go back in that day so um but yeah so I mean did, did, did you guys find it relatively easy to to make the switch I mean as, as a, a peek behind the curtain for, for people who don't know sort of who I am I actually used to work for Scott in the recruitment space and I know how how big it is to be in that office environment I mean uh, generally sort of the, the morale, how are people kind of handling it from, from your side? So technically it actually worked better than expected. So we had less teasing problems than we were expecting. Um, a guy called Tom White, who's our kind of business systems manager was great and all of that. Um, culturally, that's the challenge. Are they, the things you miss about a sales floor, the things you miss about a working collaborative office, um, as you all know, we've got multiple officers, so we do a lot over video anyway uh, amongst the officers and a lot of engagement pieces between the, the guys in different offices and when people were working from home previously. But uh, it is challenging not having everybody together at the same time. you just got to do the best you can in the situation, I think. Yeah, and is, is there anything that you weren't expecting? Uh, a few things. Um, professionally, um, I think... A few things that you weren't expecting uh, from a market's perspective of where we thought the markets would be particularly strong in terms of our um, med tech clients, software as a service type businesses, we thought um, would, as an industry, be really, really strong and continue to recruit. We thought our retail and leisure type clients might have a little bit of a, a cooling off period or something like that. Um, I think we learned pretty quickly not to assume that the whole industry will follow suit, where it's different organisations within those clusters that are either still actively recruiting and still going about their business, uh, and the ones that have actually recruited a little bit, um, and I suppose frozen a few. Uh, personally, I think the surprise is uh, I found it great spending more time with the, with the wife and the boys. Um, but I felt more guilt, which is bizarrely, I'm more guilty when you are working the whole time because you can hear them in another room. I think you feel more guilty. Whereas when you're going into the office, they're kind of not around you all the time and you see them at bedtime and in the morning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, really surprised by how guilty you're feeling all day from not seeing the boys all the time. Yeah, and I think that's the bit that, that kind of surprised me of how... I was expecting to be, I thought I was going to be really good at switching off. It'd be the end of the day, 
And I've always got my, my sort of the phone there for anything urgent, but it would be easy to just kind of write, shut the laptop down, leave that to one side, wait till the morning and, and maintain a bit of a routine. And I think that took a little bit of an adjustment period of, of making sure you're not sat with your laptop on your, on your lap while you're watching the telly eating your tea. It's like, no, drawing that line and saying, right, I'm not at work now. There's a, there's a difference and, and differential. Got to the first weekend and I was sat there, I was like, it doesn't feel like a weekend. <laughs> It's tough, it's tough though, right? And uh, most small business owners will know that it's the work-life blend, I suppose, is always there. Of, of you never really, really shut up during that period. But um, it's even tougher now of everything kind of blends into one and with days and everything. So. Hmm. No, exactly. And I guess like, what's, what's, the, what's the thing you miss the most then about, about being in? People, 100%. Um, the people uh, being around, like you say, the buzz, the culture. We've even tried a few things um, at our end of playing the background noise of an office. Uh, <laughs> different people around, and it, it doesn't work. It's not the same. It's not a tip that I'd recommend to anyone. Um, but just the miss, uh, as you'll know, kind of previously, we celebrate success a lot. So um, even in the sales meetings, the round of applause where there's an echo and there's a ripple when people are together, it's not quite the same of everybody just clapping kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, over the video. Um, but missing people uh, is a big thing. Uh, second, um, coffee. Standard oh, so of you've made, me, you've made me sound like a bad person now because I'm just missing the office coffee. So, yeah, <laughs> office coffee uh, and any kind of barista coffee when somebody's picking up is so much better than any instant I can get my hands on. So um, if anybody's got any tips on good instant coffee, connect with me on LinkedIn and send them over. Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've, we, we've, we've done a few different pots of coffee now. And I think we've ended up settling on that the other brands are available, but the Waitrose, <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's delicious. It's, it's, genuinely, like it's, it's like holiday coffee. Have you ever had like an all-inclusive holiday that they roll out the cheap stuff? It's great. Nice. I'll give it a try. I've not <laughs> tried it. I'll give it a try. Nice. And I guess look, for, for, for my side of things, I think I've, I've picked up some really good habits in terms of, like I say, switching off of an evening and things like that. I was quite guilty of often taking work home with me and, and actually drawing those lines and things. But are there any kind of habits you think that either you've picked up or that you think generally that changes that in, in people's working habits that will come out of this once the lockdown's been, been lifted? Um, a few things. I think um, with the nature of our business and with clients um, being 24-7 a lot of the time, I don't think the guys ever truly, truly shut off other than the holiday periods anyway. I think exactly as you've said, you, you keep your phone on and want to kind of do the best for your clients at all times anyway. Um, the few things that I have noticed are the guys who were working from home already in fits and starts have actually done really well and it's been quite business as usual for those guys just transitioning from one or two days at home to doing the, the five days. It's the other guys who have said, I'd like to have a bit of time working from home, I'd like to try it, that have now completely U-turned, that the ones that say, I want to get back in the office and I will never ask for a day working from home again, I promise. Um, so it's a real mixture across kind of all of our guys. Yeah, nice. And I think, <clears throat> I think it's probably highlighted to a few things. I think the people that I've spoken to is that this is kind of a change in heart almost of, I think there could be a real shift in, in the way that people have their, their bricks and mortar sites. I just think yeah. that the way that offices will run will be so different. Like I say, we're a business of sort of around the 20 headcount mark. I don't think we're going to need 20 desks anymore because I think we can, we can probably hot desk. And I think this has proven actually that we can hot desk and we can have a sort of flexible working and we've got the ability to, to jump onto video calls if we need to, or we can collaborate the days that we'll be in and when we're going to be out and, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's a major change that's going to happen. I think we'll see less uh, company logos on buildings over the next in probably sort of five ten years time because. That's you know, completely you know, say. Um, all right, nice. So we've kind of touched on it and and, and a few times obviously the area of expertise that you're that you're bringing to the, the conversation here being the recruitment space. Um, so how can we do it? You've mentioned that you've got clients that are still still hiring. How are they going about that? Um, many ways, really. So it depends on the organisation and depends what they did previously. So we're starting all of our conversations at the minute when we look to recruit for a role. Of what did you do in a pre-COVID world? Um, what was your interview process? What was your onboarding process? Try and map out what that looked like, but then ask the all important question of did that work? Because if it did work, let's try and recreate that in a virtual sense, which is 100% doable. 
Um, anything we did do uh, historically, we can recreate to a certain level uh, in the virtual world. Um, whereas a lot of clients are actually realizing that what they used to do doesn't work. And they just did a two stage one on one interview process because that's what they've always known. Uh, and then we need to look at either their retention figures or look at their um, suitable hire figures. It's actually back there, it's not worked for them. So with those guys, we can be more consultative, give them more advice as to this is what's worked for other clients that are at a similar size, that have recruited a similar position, that are in a similar market space, whatever it might be. Um, but in general, we've got a video interviewing technology with a lot of recruitment companies have got now um, which has been really really useful and the thing I'm proudest of that we built at our end at the minute is a virtual onboarding piece of software where a lot of clients have already utilized it and we've got some really good case studies now that have been rolled out where the candidate gets a brilliant experience where they log into effectively one room and they have all of the access all of the permissions to get into the firewalls that they need to get into um, and they're greeted by different people in the team and we can set an onboarding process up where they are getting a briefing from the HR, getting a briefing from the MD, speaking to the FD at a certain time, they're even having lunch with somebody in a completely different team over a virtual lunch type thing um, where you can get a delivery order or just eat order, whatever it might be, to recreate onboarding and recreate them really becoming a part of the culture from day one. Yeah, that's awesome. And it sounds like it's, is this something that you were using before or is this an initiative that came together for for the lockdown no it was so it's been brought to the forefront with the lockdown um but it was something we've as you know um often recruited on a global basis previously so we've had to arrange interviews where might be a panel interview with one client in amsterdam one's in new york and one's in london and the uh, candidate in question sat in huddersfield for example um, so we've had that kind of technology anyway um it's getting used a hell of a lot more now than it did previously, but um, yeah, I suppose it's, it's tried and tested pre lockdown. Okay, nice. And I guess you, you touched on it at, at kind of the top of the, the, the question there, but I mean, has this highlighted anything generally in people's mindsets of what, what is normal when it comes to recruitment? And it, it's almost like, are you seeing this as an opportunity to reassess actually, do you know what? This system's a little bit broken we'll use this as an opportunity to do something completely different and change the way that we do something. That's been the real eye and the real, I suppose, value add to our clients in this time where they have been doing things for two years, three years, 10 years, 20 years, depending on the size and, and kind of age of the business, where it may not work, but it gives them a chance to reassess what works and what doesn't work. Um, so that's really effective. Um, gives them a chance as well to reassess the criticality of positions of which ones are actually really important that we do need that we still need to recruit for now because either there's a significant um, cost saving elements hiring or a significant value add even in this period compared to the ones where they were nice to have the headcount being approved in the old world but when we reassess it do we really need that type of role so yeah, I think giving clients a chance to focus on what's important um, but what we've also seen is the bar being raised a bit as well. So I think a lot of clients are really, uh, content, I would say, with hiring a six or a seven uh, previously um, and now looking for an eight or a nine. And they actually can look for an eight or a nine because the clients that are still hiring during this period, um, we as headhunters have got more access to talent than we ever have before um, because there's less meetings, less commute, people are actually at home wanting to talk to people um, so we can get hold of more people there. Um, and whilst a lot of companies may have not handled the whole situation superbly well and completely retreated, put everything on hold, put projects on hold, put people on um, furlough or, or cut people or whatever it might be, um, it's a real opportunity for the ones that want to be progressive and want to continue to hire the highest support of talent. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say, are you finding that... Uh, that you're you're having more open sort of discussions i mean look there's <clears throat> there are there, there there is some some negative connotations potentially to the recruitment industry sometimes i think some people are tarred with with the same brush as, as others which is often to their detriment because there's some genuinely amazing consultants that that i've worked with in the past and who genuinely care about people uh, and their careers are you finding that do you think those people are going to come to the fore now and actually the ones that are providing that level of consultation as opposed to just here's a CV, here's a job spec, let's put it together. 
100%. You find people like that are going to be more in an, an advantaged position now because they've got genuine relationships with people and that, that level of trust is more important than ever. 100%. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. This, um, I think there'll be a sharpening of the pencil, so to speak, in the recruitment industry itself, where you're absolutely right. That there's people that have been in the recruitment industry previously that have rang somebody, say, got any jobs, got a job spec and just sent some candidates across, and that's been the end of it. Um, the thing that we try and train our guys and across the whole industry where the recruiters are adding the most value are that they specialise in a certain industry and they're actually sharing that information with clients. Um, of, they've got a really good oversight of what's going on within the market, um, who's, not just who's hiring, but who's actually continuing with projects, who's not continuing with projects. Um, and that insight's really valuable to, to small business owners as well. Awesome. Nice. Um, cool. And look, we don't want these uh, sort of chats to, to, to be too long. I know that you've got lots to be getting on with the, with the rest of your day. So, I mean, look, as a, as a sort of a, a bit of a roundup then, I mean, look, do you think, as a, as a yes or a no, do you think COVID-19 then has changed the way that, that, that people will consider recruitment in the future? Yeah, undoubtedly. Um, number of different ways i think that exactly as you say the consultants that add real value will be the ones that, that come to the forefront um uh, things um but i also think there'll be uh moving forward for clients i think that there will be raising the bar as well of hiring a better quality of person better quality of talent i think there's more focus on um talent engagement and brand engagement to make sure that clients are at the forefront of attracting the right type of people. Um, but then I also think that the need for a more flexible workforce and I suppose more contractors coming in um, will also come to the forefront as well of uh, there's still uncertainty in the market um, and some of the solutions that we've put in place with our clients is to provide, if they have got a permanent hiring freeze, to provide them contracts in the interim. So projects can still be delivered, things can still be done, business can still keep ticking over. And um, quite a few of them we've based on, uh, they pay for the deliverables rather than actually pay for the time spent. Um, so it's quite an innovative solution where the client is, I suppose, more in control of people delivering things. Yeah, nice. Cool. And look, is there, uh, this is kind of a bit of a, a, an open one, but I mean, look, is there anything that you've kind of taken from this that, that you're, you're, you're going to instill within yourself almost moving forwards? I mean, I've, you'll be shocked to know um, I've actually been doing some form of physical exercise and I haven't come out in a rash, uh, which I thought I would. Um, right. but I'm not allergic to it. Um, are there any good habits you've picked up that, that you're going to be taking forwards? Uh, yeah, loads. Um, spending more time with the kids, uh, first and foremost. I've actually spent more time on video chats with my closest friends as well, um, where I think life and everything else gets in the way normally of um, going for food or going for a beer or whatever it might be. Um, and we've, we've met up every single week uh, on a video conference. Um, I've also, I'm doing a part-time course at Yale uh, University as well, uh, which has been really good on an online tuition course. Um, so lots of things that, you wouldn't ever get time for in I suppose normal life. Um but you're actually getting time for now, but I'm gonna put more time more time aside for in the future. Awesome. How about you other than the next size? Um, I'm finding myself, I'm, I'm, I'm hydrating myself better. I think that's a gen, general rule. I find myself drinking a lot more water. Um I would say I'm eating better, uh, but that's not true. Um <laughs> Uh, the only way that would have happened if, is if the delivery company said, oh, we're shutting down and that was made illegal. Uh, it's actually been dangerous for, for, for the diet. Um, I've started playing the guitar more. So there you go. I'm getting, I'm self-teaching the guitar and I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm above average, I'd imagine now. Um, but, but, but there you go. Um, but no, nice. But look, again, thanks for sort of taking a little bit of time out. Um, for anyone that's interested and wants a little bit more information on um, <clears throat> sort of what you guys are up to and what the guys at Forsyth Barnes are up to, where, where can they find you? Uh, ForsythBarnes.com uh, or all of our guys are on LinkedIn as well. So feel free to connect with me and uh, I'll point you in the right direction. 
Fantastic. Um, and likewise for myself and the guys at Expend, E-X-P-E-N-D, you can find any information that you might want to find out about how to manage your expenses and some of the schemes that we're running at the moment um, during the crisis. And as part of the sort of keep it and going campaign, like I say, trying to be that hub for, for SMEs and business owners and, and personal uh, sort of relationships within the, within the UK during the lockdown and during the coronavirus. And that is www.keepbritaingoing.com. Catch you guys soon.